What's up, guys? Devin Zander here from the Rowdy Boys, and today there's no Clayton Johnson. I just have special guest. Robert Walsh. Yeah, Robert yeah. Walsh. For some reason, I thought you were going to say Robert Johnson, because yeah. I'm just so used to Clayton. So. I used to go by Robert Joseph. I could say that. Robert feel better. Joseph. Well, name. look, guys, today I brought on a guest. Clayton's out with COVID. He's being a pussy about it. He's like, oh, I, have, I can't go outside. And I was like, dude, come over, cough in my mouth. If it tastes like COVID, then stay home. But he wouldn't even do that. It was pathetic. I was very disappointed in him. But uh, anyway, so we brought on a great copywriter here today, Mr. Robert Joseph Walsh, who's written for great people such as, and, and you know, like great people. We're talking about the best people in the world. I got a guy right next to me, Parker, and he just loves Donald Trump Jr. And Rob has written for him. He's I written have. for Garrett White. Uh, and I don't know who, not Garrett White. I don't Sean, know why I said that. Sean, Sean Whalen. Sean Whalen. Sean Whalen. I don't know why I said Patrick, Garrett White. Patrick David's a good one. People like him a lot. I don't know like which ones you can't say because you have like NDAs or what, but feel free <sighs> yeah. to listen to anyone you want. That's cool. We can go with that. All right. We can stop we right go there. with that. And he's worked with bigger, <laughs> bigger names too that you definitely know of, but you probably heard of some of those people as well. And uh, today we're just like going to shoot the shit. I'm probably going to ask you a couple questions and then we'll just have a conversational style. Rob and I are actually really good friends uh, somewhat. I'll, I'll zoom in on him at this part so he can uh, either confirm or deny. Yeah. Okay. Good friends. And we can just talk about like copywriting stories. Cool. I want to, I want to ask you questions and then we'll talk about it. Like, you know, we're butt buddies or whatever. So like we're butt buddies. Rob, first things first, how did you get even into copywriting, man? Like uh, how did you end up in this world? Dude. So I was, I've always been blue collar. I've always done like construction when I was like a teenager metal fabrication welding so I was like never never really had any plans to do anything near what I'm doing now right um I would actually live when I moved to Illinois during the the first recession not this this one that 2008 we're in now. I mean yeah. the first one was like yeah. hundreds of years ago <laughs> yeah well <laughs> yeah 2008 because uh, I was in blue collar then so I moved to um Illinois and one of my roommates was a corporate consultant, really smart, you know, analytical guy. Yeah. Uh, I actually came across a YouTube ad, I think, way back then um, for print on demand for, you remember, Ads Cracked? Yeah, uh, Donald Donald, Wilson's Donald thing. Wilson's yep. Ad Cracked. Uh, so he wanted to try that. And I was in two bands at the time. So I did a little bit of writing. Can you give us a little vocal? Is, like, what did what did you sound like? Were you singing? Loving you is easy. easy. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so <laughs> saying that kind of stuff, right? Hell uh, so, yeah. So I did a little bit of writing. So in, in his mind, he's like, well, I need someone, I need something to go on these ads. You know, he's, he, he launched one t-shirt campaign. I, th I think he said he spent like $7 and made $70 back. Cause you know, there's like no, no, um, competition back then. So like, even with no knowledge, you can run an ad and you know, it would, it would work well for the most part. So he's like, okay, I, I really want to scale this. I want to, you know, put more time and effort in this and really, you know, give it a, a solid go. But yeah. I don't know what to write in these ads. I'm not a writer. You write songs and poetry, so you're a writer, Ooh. right? Gay I'm alert. Like, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> like really sad emo shit. Like, my girlfriend, she left me. But uh, so I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll give it a try. Um, so we both put in $1,000 to... Um, buy ads cracked, um, and we kind of same thing with a friend. You yeah. know why him and I split yeah. ads cracked too. I love Wyatt. I miss that guy. Wyatt, if you're watching, he's not come home. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. <clears throat> yeah, so we both dropped the thousand dollars in and uh, started doing it. And I didn't even know what copywriting was at the time. We just knew something yeah. needed to go on the ads and something needed to go, you know, on the pages and stuff. So that's like what I was doing while he was running the ads and stuff, and it worked out really well. So uh, over time, um, we just had our ecom stores going and. And from there, um, I really started focusing more on the creative side of things and, and copy ended up being like one thing that I was really good at. Uh, I had a bad experience with uh, an e-commerce company that you're familiar with. I'm not oh, going to yeah. go into it. Fuck uh, that guy. But it left a bad taste in my mouth, so I took like almost an entire year off. You did the same thing to me, baby. Yeah. I would give hey, we baby. do. We usually do fist bumps on the show, but <laughs> yeah. we'll do that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I stepped out for almost a year at that time. I'm like, fuck this industry. I'm just going to go back to fucking... And this is after making you know millions of dollars in yeah. e-commerce. I'm just like, that's how shitty I thought the industry was at the time. Because uh, I was doing a lot of things that I didn't really want to do, you know, like, on top of copywriting. Yeah. Well, I like, just like, like, every, I mean, everybody does stuff they don't want to do in a business. You know, things have to be done. But there, there were just elements I didn't want, I didn't enjoy doing, like hiring, firing, managing teams. That's the best know, part. Um, firing people. <laughs> all I love making people cry. I'm like, hey, don't be well, such I a bitch. I'm giving I, you I a valuable now. life lesson. Life ain't always perfect. <laughs> <laughs> So, so anyway, yeah, so I, I took some time off, and, and, and Matt, actually, Schmidt, your partner, yeah, he partner was Scott. actually the first person to reach out to me, because um, within, like, the small e-commerce print-on-demand community at the time, 
excuse me, like I was reasonably well known. We all like yep. had our own little incubator of of people that yeah. we would share ideas and stuff with. So uh, I was kind of known for doing the creative stuff and like the unconventional, you know, out of the box type of let's try this. Oh, it works, cool. Nobody else wanted to. Nobody else has the guts to try that. So he reached out to me and he's like, "Hey, can you help me write this this ad?" And I'm like, uh, "Sure, I haven't done anything in like ten months, but I'll try." And he liked it, and then word got around that I was kind of doing stuff again, and people started approaching me for copywriting jobs. And you and Mason hit me up with uh, uh, your company Entrecom at the time. Oh yeah, I remember that. And had me helping your students with copy, and that's kind of how I got my foot in the door doing copywriting. I don't know if you knew Let's that. Let's fucking but, go! Yeah. I did not know because I think Mason hired you or something, yeah. not me. Yeah. Well. Well, thank you, thank you, Mason. Thanks, Mason. No thanks to you, Devin. Nope. Fuck me. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. And then uh, it just it started like snowballing. I uh, I was doing predominantly um, like e-commerce copy for a long time because that's what I've been doing for years. Um, and um, <laughs> um, I had someone reach out to me for an event, and they're like, "Hey, I had no information about the event." And they're like, "Do you write for like live events? Do you help sell tickets and stuff?" And me, I'm just like, "I'm a yes man." I'm like, "Yeah, sure, I could do that. I will do whatever yeah. you need." Yeah, ended up being an event for Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank. And at that event, Greg Cardone was speaking. There was Burnt Ullman speaking. He had the, I think the, to this date, the biggest um, product launch with Target. Um, it was with uh, Jennifer Lopez with, oh, wow. with something of hers. So he was speaking there. I met him, became good friends with him and his wife. And, you know, just kind of started snowballing all these connections I made and stuff. And, you know, I, I wrote for one of the sharks, like my first, like, really big client. Fucking shark. So, yeah. There, was he a kinda, great white, tiger shark, nurse uh, shark? Sand shark? Sand, sand shark. I think we have those. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Never heard of it. Uh, hang out on the beach. Well, man, it's obviously been a long career, and you, yeah. you've come a long way since then. You released a book, and we'll talk about that later, and we can tell people where they can pick up that book, too. Um, but, like, to you, I mean, it, I think everybody constitutes what makes a good copywriter differently. Yeah. Like, to me, it's someone who's creative, can think outside the box, uh, comes out with unique solutions, which I guess is just a fancy way of saying is creative. It's fucking like corporate jargon, right? But yeah, dude, to me, it's someone who can take something. Uh, really, I find the mark of a good copywriter is someone who can enter a crowded marketplace and still find a way to make a product seem... What the hell is that? You, you We're need, being abducted right There's now. a weird noise, but the mics aren't going <laughs> to pick that up, so it's fine. Cool. Um they can enter a crowded marketplace and they can find a way to make their offering unique, compelling, and, and seem like something new, kind of like carving out their own spot in a marketplace. Yeah. So I'm curious, what what do you think makes a good copywriter? Uh, honestly, dude, I'm really big on authenticity. And it kind of sounds like a, I mean, that could be seen in so many different ways. But I, I think I, I posted something yesterday basically saying, I think the biggest thing that holds people back from actually establishing themselves yeah. as like uh, an influential person or like an authority figure is trying to be too much like other people. Like yeah. it's, it's good to do what's working like at its core. Like, okay, Facebook ads are working. This is how you run a Facebook ad, yeah. you know, at its core. But like what goes in that ad is really what's going to separate you from the other people running the ads. Yeah. I think that's kind of how it applies to pretty much everything. I can, I can definitely say that's how it applies for copy. There are, fun, there are frameworks frameworks that you use. There are, you know, fundamentals that we follow. But it's like how we actually word that, how we – you know, structure the copy, like the the little, you know, um, flavor that we add, mm -hmm. depending on like the, the market we're writing for, the people we're writing for, you know, the ebonics you use when you're writing for like a ebonics. specific audience, I don't think that's know? right, bro. I think you're looking for like jargon <laughs> no, or something. Jargon. You can use ebonics. Ebonics is definitely not up, what he's looking so, for, right? No. Just to be clear. I grew up in the hood. I've written ebonics on ads before. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hey, guys. He, his, R. Walsh. No, I'm not going to give him your email. I was going to say, send him hate mail because this guy is being racist. Um, but, dude, no. It's, I, yeah, it's slang, dude. You know what I mean? Like, slang that like applies to that specific yeah. audience. Jargon is the technical term yeah, for it. Jargon is um, <laughs> But, dude, I think that you're, you're right on. And I, I agree wholeheartedly. And I also think that this is why... You know, uh, you perform so well on Facebook. Like, you have a really big audience that just follows your posts and stuff like that. And it's because you're you, unforgivingly yeah. you. You're not afraid of who you are, and you go out there, and you just be yourself. And yeah. people like that because they, I don't know, they just, they people yeah. want to follow certain, or other people with certain values, with certain beliefs, with certain characteristics, and they so much people are afraid to be themselves right now yeah. because it's we're living in an era of cancel culture. Yeah. People cannot be themselves. And when you can be authentically, unapologetically yourself, you express yourself, your beliefs, your views, your values, your outlooks, your opinions, 
People fucking love that. And that is how you build a raving fan base. And people, but it, it's hard to do that too. Yeah. And if a copywriter can do that for someone, then I agree. That's an amazing skill. But it, the first issue is that a lot of people can't even do it themselves. You know, like how is a copywriter going to emulate someone's personality and help them be the, their authentic self when that person <laughs> struggles themselves to be their authentic yeah. self, right? So, like, what about you? Like, how do you do it? Do you just not care? I mean, is that the secret? What is it? Um, I mean, you know me, like, on a personal level. Like, I am very laid back. Real personal. And, and even, even more laid back than I want to be in a lot of cases. You know, I'm, I'm, I would say, apathetic to a lot of, to, to a certain degree. And, and it, I think as much as it's, like, a... A positive mind is definitely a negative mind too. Like it's the double edged sword. Anything you do is gonna be, you know, fifty fifty. Not always fifty fifty, but the grass is gonna be greener. There's I drink fifty fifties. Yeah. Fifty fifties in Kava. Got a fifty fifty right here. Yeah, man. I mean it definitely I I think the not caring comes into play when it comes to um like approaching work. I have talked and told people not to let like their personal, you know, values get in the way of work. I mean, to an extent, obviously you don't wanna fucking you know, promote certain things if you know it's a, a bullshit offer yep. or if it's a scam or something. Yep. When it comes to, you know, building work, I don't I don't align 100% with everybody I've worked with, obviously. Oh, I you know. know. <laughs> yeah, but I have turned down work, you know, that, that I obviously would have seen like, okay, this is bullshit. This dude's fucking, he's ripping people off. I'm not going to help him. I could easily help him sell this, but it's not happening. But I just, I just don't allow that to get in my way. I, I really allow myself to... Um, I mean, kind of play a character, man. We're kind of an actor, you know? We're kind of yep. actors as, as copywriters. There, there's a book. I can't remember who wrote it, but there's a really good book on that. Um, and it talks about how basketball players do that. Like, they're one person on the uh, off the court, and then on the court, they're just, like, a beast. And, like, they, they painted the example of Kobe Bryant. I can't remember what his name was. Black Mamba. Or Mamba, Black Mamba is the guy from, yeah, Black, <laughs> from, from, from restaurants, restaurants down the road. But oh, it's called the alter ego effect. That's okay. what it's called, and it talks about how great performers have alter egos. So that way, when something happens, like in their personal life, like let's say you go through a breakup or a divorce, or you know something happens in your family, right? It doesn't go. It doesn't affect your work because yeah. when you get to work, it's like a, a flip switches. And now you're the Mamba or whatever. I'm probably fucking that up. I don't know. I don't Beyonce, watch basketball. Yeah, Beyonce has Sasha Fierce. A lot of people think that's her satanic alter ego yeah. for Illuminati ego. Yeah, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, probably. Hannah is. Montana, Miley Cyrus, you know, whatever. Hannah Montana. For me, it's like I just pretend I'm my dog Brutus. I get around on all fours. I start licking shit. You eat pasta? I eat pasta. I actually did role play as my dog once. <laughs> <and> eat <laughs> pasta. Well, no, guys. Um, what I did was I put a hoodie on my dog, and then I stuck my arms through the hoodie, and then I fed him pasta with it my was hands. So funny. And then, and it then I also it. I did a voiceover. You yeah. watched it yesterday, okay? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> but no, I, I I think that that's interesting, and you know I've tried it before, but it's to me that also is like a little less authentic. You know, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the answer. There's a million different ways to skin a cat, honestly. So you know, I'm not here. And I don't know about you. Maybe you are. Oh. But um, I'm not here to tell people what like works best or what's best. Sure. I'm here to share what has worked for me. Yeah, you know that's what exactly saying? what I've been doing. That's what my yeah. whole book is about. Just like this is, I pretty much just reverse engineered my entire process. A little closer to the mic. Sorry. We'll do you some I'm good. I'm new to this. Yeah. I'm pretty much like just my book is just me reverse engineering my whole process and like trying to figure out. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to share this with people, you know? Yeah. Um, and let's let's get to the book in a sec. I want I do want to talk about it, but I want to get some more stories first because uh, I, I like to save. I know you yeah. weren't trying to promote yeah, it or anything. I, I just that. I say that for the end. And for for those of you who are watching, using actual podcast mics is very different from using normal microphones. Yep. Like you literally got to be deep throat in these things. So if you've been in the porn industry, you have an advantage over everybody else because you're very used to what you have to do with, with these microphones. <laughs> but uh, you know something I've been wanting to do lately is like. Try to understand. I, I like getting horror stories from our guests. So, is there like a client horror story or anything you've had where you're like, oh my fucking God, you know, this um, was a terrible experience? Or where you just saw something go down in the industry and maybe you're just a spectator or something? Curious though. So, I'm not going to say any names, but I will say I, I, I have taken on some jobs, one in particular, where I took on way more, way more work than I would have. Um, for way less pay, just for the sake of, of my portfolio. Yeah, you know, good name. Yeah, good name, good name. I mean, super nice, super nice guy to me. But uh, some sketchy shit going on, obviously, Always. at that level. Um, there's just gonna be. Um, a, and I mean, I definitely, 
lowered myself, I think. Like, I put up with way more than I would have for way longer just for the sake of some stability. Yeah. Right? Um, I was moving to a new state. COVID was going on. St. You know? Pete represent. Yeah, I was a little worrisome, you know. Like, uh, I, I had lost some clients because people were, like, panicking. You know, COVID was going fucking nuts. Yep. Um, so I'm like, all right, I'll fucking do this. They, you know, offered me a long contract to work with them. I'll do it. Um, but it was, I will say it was very hard to get back out of that because I was comfortable. It was super easy to, to like kills. slip into it, man. It was so easy. Even after running multiple businesses, being, having a successful copywriting agency on my own, you know, kind of stepping back into actually it was my first corporate like job, I would say, Yeah. you know, um, after it was, it was very fucking easy to stay there, dude. Even though like I was, I was living like obviously not making anywhere near as much money as I was on my own. Um, it, I kind of justified it because it was consistent, mm-hmm. you know, but I will say like, as soon as it finally like snapped and I'm like, okay, I'm fucking over this. You know, I mean, one of the reasons I stopped working with them was because, um, I started working on my shit more and I just, yeah. it's kind of over it. I'm just like, I, I remember that. Like yeah. you were working during the day, working on your book at night. This guy yeah. was hustling. And yeah, then you, I think you had a girlfriend at the time too. Yeah. You're dealing, you're hanging out with her. So it's like, you're just blowing full steam yeah. everywhere. A lot, man. And I was like, I can't fucking do this anymore, dude. But, um, I think what you're saying is is so important for people to understand, though, because uh, I've learned this multiple times, and it's not just work, you know? Mm-hmm. It, complacency is a killer, and it, it's yeah. in everything. Why do you think people stay? Like, what you just said is what people in abusive relationships say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just so easy to stay, right? Yeah. And you have it's a house, like, you have a car, you have, you know, a bed to sleep in, yeah. but you get your ass beat. But, dude, you like, know? here's the thing. People are too afraid these days to be uncomfortable. Yeah. If you live a life that is only comfort, then what you're doing is n- getting nowhere near your maximum potential yeah. because your maximum potential is outside your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you ever want to do anything great and it, it could even be like, just think about this. People are scared to go say, Hey, to a fucking guy or a girl out at the bar or club. Yeah. Like dude, happiness is when you start doing things that make you uncomfortable because you don't want to be at the fucking end no. thinking, like God, I I wish I would have just taken that fucking chance. Yeah, because you're gonna fucking die no matter what. You're gonna <laughs> hit the end. Nothing happens. Oh, your your ego's hurt. I'm so sorry. Let me get a band aid. Wait, they don't make them for ego. Shut the fuck up and try again. Jesus yeah. Christ. And, and it's a uh, it, I actually it's crazy too because I I made more money in the three months following that client than the than the year I made working there because I was yeah. like in panic mode. I'm like, oh shit, I need to fucking hustle. I need Bro, that to, shit works. I need to fucking I need to do shit. You know, I had yeah. a goal and I fucking bl- blew that goal out of the water. You know? And and now I'm like just chilling. You know, yeah. I got a lot of shit done. But when you're real uncomfortable yeah, like dude. that, dude, it really it really pushes you. I remember yeah. um back in like twenty I think it was twenty sixteen when uh I was working with aforementioned terrible business partner that oh, you yeah. also had. Um word up. But uh after I, I quit working with them, I uh, stopped making money for a bit because obviously I quit my gig and I ha- I was making like $100,000 a week back then. So I was like, yo, I'm fucking balling. I remember you were wearing you know? Louis V t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, I bought a bunch of those they, and I was, I, I put on so much weight then that none of them fit like real quick, Shit. you know, like I bought them and I swear to God, I, I must've been putting on like 10 pounds a month. Like Fuck, man. they, they stopped fitting real quick, bro. You remember I blew up like a balloon, yeah, dude. dude. That was quick. Yeah, pretty big. Um, it, and that's just like, uh, that's a topic for another day, but I, I was spending money. Like I still had it, you know? And essentially I ran, I, I spent, had to be like over half a million dollars in uh, a few months or something. Yeah. Uh, not like a few months, but like, eight months um and you know i like you were there i even i took you i was like hey rob i'm, I'm gonna go courtside to the bulls game you want to go and i just bought you a fucking courtside ticket yeah. and then i bought us a hotel that night and i and i brought all the boys out to the game i think we brought like i brought like five people to the game yeah, that like night tony, or four or five tony and wyatt and- tony like wyatt kelsey and you and i just bought everybody yeah. tickets and i was doing shit like that all the time and uh eventually you know i ran out of money and I backed myself into a corner where I had like $12,000 left. Yep. And I, I moved into the building. That's actually, we're in a new office, by the way, if you couldn't tell. Um, and the fucking podcast setup is complete garbage. It looks terrible. <laughs> like, I hope it looks okay, but there's like wires fucking crisscross. Rob can't back his chair up or he'll fucking knock over a camera. <laughs> but I moved into a building like right behind here, you know. And I was like, damn, I only have, I got like no money left. And I got an office actually in the same building right beneath where we are and i was like dude 
I, I just got a hustle, man. And I built a brand from zero to like thir- zero dollars, zero revenue. I think awesome. I mean, this was smart apps back then. And I think we were like negative $3,000 a month because we had engineers and stuff. I just fucking sat downstairs and I came up with a plan. And then like two months later, I had a brand new YouTube channel with 30,000 subscribers. I was getting hundreds of thousands of views. I was building my audience. We were up to like six figure months, like instantly. And it's just, you know, eventually when you're backed into that corner, bro, you fight like a fucking cat, yeah. wild cat to get out of it, you know? And it's really cool to see that side of you. But then if you let yourself get comfortable again, you, instead of being like that wild bobcat or mountain lion, whatever, you just become like a docile little, you know, like my yeah. cat, like my fat cat that's never hurt anyone, Charles. Yeah. I love Charles. <laughs> yeah, so let, me, let me ask you a question because I do suffer from, from, from this, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people. Like I, I work Ups my and downs. fucking ass off when I'm like, when I need to. But I do kind of coast when I hit a certain point for a little while. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to chill for a little bit, whatever. And it, it worked. it's worked yeah. for me so far. But, like, how do you personally – I know I'm the guest here, but I'm curious. I'm trying to learn. That's why I'm here. Um, it's okay. We're, it's a conversation. Yeah. How, how do you keep that, like, urgency to, like, keep ascending and yeah. keep, you know, that drive? Well, you know, it, it is, like, a mixture of things. And let me walk you through it. Like, number one is – dopamine and, and and we'll get to that number two is building systems so it doesn't even matter if you don't have drive and then number three is realizing that drive is and like motivation is a myth sure. but number one like dopamine if if you are filling your mind so at the beginning of this year i got into world of warcraft a bit and my work suffered because of it i forced myself to quit and if you if you get dopamine like repeatedly elsewhere it's going to be really really hard to work. And I was actually thinking about you and this last night, because when you were talking to me about how you couldn't focus on your book, even though it's the best book ever, I recommended he read the three body problem series. These books are amazing. Definitely check them out guys. It's my favorite um, sci-fi series of all time. But when you were saying that, I was like, man, I, I bet in my mind, I didn't say anything, but I was thinking it's probably because like you're overloaded on dopamine from something. I don't know what it is, right? Like uh, YouTube videos, being on Facebook, TikTok, or whatever. And that's why I have all that shit blocked. Like I don't look at it at all. And I, I downloaded the Facebook app to help market my content because you told me to like post a stories or whatever. And I, need, I needed the app to do that. I couldn't do it from my computer. And I, I realized that I was opening it and like scrolling. And I was like, uh, again, I was getting distracted throughout the day because I would open that and I was like, well, fuck it. I, I'm getting like less work done. So just try to remove dopamine. And, and honestly, that means like not jerking off, not like looking at porn and doing all that shit all the time. You got to try sure. to cut as much of it out as you can because once you uh, get used to like scrolling on these apps and doing all these things, like it does become really hard to work because you're so focused on, uh, you're just distracted all the time. Now, there is an exception when it's okay to get distracted, and that's when you're Which watching the Rowdy Boys. jerk off and watch porn? No, well, if you're jerking off to the Rowdy Boys, but oh, I mean, please don't I'm, do that. I'm good then. Oh, if you guys do I'm do good. it, just please don't fucking tell me about it. I swear to God, I will turn this channel off right away. I will delete it. Um, but so that's like, that's like the number one thing. It's really hard to get good work done and, yeah. and be motivated if you're having these dopamine issues. Um, and like, I, I just try really hard. Like, I'm a big video gamer. I love video games. Yeah, same. And I just don't let myself play them. I, I did WoW for a few months, and honestly, I don't necessarily regret it, but I kind of regret it. There's like, I'm half regret, half not. Uh, so number two, though, is systems. So obviously, you're always going to have up and downs. Like yeah. part of being an entrepreneur or even just like an entrepreneur, a high-performing individual, um, and it doesn't even have to be about, it could just be about going to the gym. So like in a sense, because you do have this talent already because you go to the gym no matter what. I mean, I look do. at you, you're fucking Jack, bro. So how do we apply it to work, right? Yeah. Well, Systems. So come up with systems on how you're supposed to run your business. So that could be for everything, right? Like you set cadences for content. So for instance, let's take a look at Roseanne, which is not a part of Rowdy Boys, but it's kind of like in conjunction with it. At Roseanne, every Tuesday, we have a blog post that's released. Every Thursday, we have a Rowdy Boys episode that's released. Every Friday, we have a Roseanne YouTube video that's released. Parker's laughing. And it, we could take a look at other things like we just set up systems for our employees. We know what our employees need to do and they go out there and get shit done. And that's why like when people make a lot of money in their business, they'll go out and they'll blow it on stuff. Right. In reality, what we should be doing is blowing it on employees 
so that we can continue to make that much money and then go buy stuff with the money that's being generated by our employees. But yeah, I mean, I'm probably explaining this very poorly, but the, no. the what I have in mind at, at this part two here is just that um, it's so valuable to have employees that know how your business works, that know how to talk like you, how to do work like you. Like I have a really great marketing team at SCUP. We got two writers now, Mlad and Mom Chill. These guys are amazing. Dope. And they, they've made my life so much easier where I just need to now architect and come up with the ideas of what's going on. And I, I know they'll get it done. So that means honestly, like if I didn't want to go to work that week, it wouldn't matter. Everything would still be done, you know? And, and that should help people see, like, I, I know some people, and I doubt you think this way, but I know a lot of people just view empl employees as like an expense. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, they cost money. And then they multiply my money, it compounds. Mm -hmm. The whole point of an employee is to make more money than you're paying them. And if they're generating that, it frees you up to do more higher leverage, more higher, higher leverage tasks, I right? So... While they're busy working on the copy, I can go out and find things that have true leverage, where if I pull that lever, it lifts a big rock, which makes me a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? You capitalist pig. I'm not. I mean, dude, no, I, I, look, I'll tell you what, guys. <laughs> I take care of my employees better yeah. than most people do, and our copywriters yeah. even get a percentage of sales they generate. Yeah. Actually, so. I was a copywriter for you at one point. Remember, we were just talking about it. It was, uh, yeah. it was very nice. Yeah. yeah, it was probably highly sexual. Probably the most was, arousing yeah. job you've ever had. You see me at work every day. You see these huge fucking muscles. You're probably, ow, I just hit myself in the face. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Just, just trying to get systems. And it doesn't even, if you don't have employees, just have systems for yourself. So when you come in, you just know exactly what to do. And then also... The, something that's underrated is just planning ahead. Yeah. Like we have at SCUP, we have all our work done on the marketing team for the next month, which is, I'm, I'm upset about that. I think we should have a few months done, but we're working on it. We're getting better. We just got, uh, like I said, Mladen in. He's our new copy chief and he's crushing, he's but, but he's helping me assign work out a lot tasks and it's allowing us to plan ahead. And, we, and when you have everything planned ahead, you know exactly what you need to work on. Yeah. Because with a lot of lower level entrepreneurs, uh, a lot of the issue is like, they're like, man, I don't know what to work on today. And even you say this to me, right? Yeah. So, you know, sometimes when you do have that burst of inspiration or that moment where you really feel like getting a lot done, take that time and, and plan out like a few months, you know, and then you just know what to do. And that's, that's also why setting goals that are, um, what is it called? Um, numerical goals, quantitative when you set quantitative goals and you reverse engineer them, that also gives you a lot of insight in what to do. So if you set a goal for a quarter and it's like, uh, I want to generate a thousand leads. All right. To generate a thousand leads, that means I need to do X, Y, and Z, which would be like, we're do this many pieces of content, spend this much money on ads and uh, create this many lead magnets or something like that. Right. It's it just creating clarity and systems around what you want to do. All right. The third part was just like fucking doing it no matter what, because motivation and like drive all these things well drive maybe not necessarily but they're missed like we can't rely on them yeah. to allow us to get things done just think about it dude why do you go to the gym because it's what you do yeah. right it's not because want you want results. to it, it's not because of this it's just like at this point it's just a part of your life yeah, it's I a part of your identity exactly yeah. and that's what we need to try to do with work and dude i'm like still bad at it we we have had super productive past few weeks at work and then ever since Saturday, like this past Saturday, I, since we were moving and I was prepping for this, dude, like I've been off. You know, I haven't been doing yeah. as well. But certain things I know I need to do because we built systems around it. So like the content, I'm here, I'm doing it. I have released my blog post. I did everything I need to do with the marketing team. My Rowdy Boys episode will be dropped tomorrow. I will have a YouTube video out on Friday. And you, typically that's Clayton's job, but Clayton's not here. So someone has to do it, you know. Yeah. It's like whether or not we want to do it, we do it anyways because we're men. And I, I'm not saying women can't do it either, but and then they can, and I think they should. <clears throat> but me, I view myself as a man that takes care of his family, which means that I need to get up and fucking do it whether I want to or not. Yeah. And my wife doesn't need me to take care of her, but I want to fucking do it anyways because I want to be there for her and I want her to never worry about anything I don't want my kids to ever worry about anything, but I'm going to try to make their life hard anyways, because I think that that like builds grit. It builds perseverance. It yeah, builds a good, totally. good will, strong person, strong individual. And 
make like it fucking jacked. Yeah, I'm gonna. You're gonna help my kids get jacked. Obviously, I can't help them do it. I'm like a fucking toothpick. But at least I'm not Parker. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't think he, he's I don't got know if he heard me. <laughs> hey Parker, can you pull up that uh, video? Jamie, can you pull that video up for us? Hey Jamie. Okay. Um, yeah. So that was like a long rant, and I, I wish that I could have no, enjoy it. worded myself a bit better and said it more uh, eloquently. But it's you know no, it, was, it was very passionate I and think very just, understood. At, at the end yeah. of the day, if if we're gonna re look at the the three things again, number one is like, dude, if you're on YouTube, if you're on social media all the time, like that shit's the devil. Yep. Um, I don't go on Facebook. I don't even like go to run our ads. I do go on YouTube, but lately I've been watching a lot less like exciting things. I've been watching history of like um ancient battles and stuff, yeah. which is a lot of fun. I do that before I go to bed. Oh, I also watch creepy YouTube videos with my wife um while we're in bed. Mr. Ballin, it's an interesting YouTube channel I just found. Uh, number two, build systems, hire employees. That way your business works without you. You should still be in it because you can do higher leverage tasks sure. and you can mastermind. But when you have employees there to work, it doesn't matter if you don't feel like doing things because they'll still be there. That being said, uh, as a leader, people will work off based, like you set the cadence, you set the tone. So if they see you crushing it, they'll crush it. And if they see you being kind of lazy, they'll probably be kind of lazy too. But it is entirely possible for you to be kind of lazy, but still crack the fucking whip. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And then point number three is like, just fucking do it, dude. Like no one's going to save you. Uh, like I was telling, like I was telling you last night, man, or maybe I wasn't telling you, maybe I was telling Steven, I can't remember, but I think it was you. Um, and I was like, dude, we got a window and it's fucking closing. Mm -hmm. Eventually the whole internet will be different. Uh, the way everything works, the way that we operate our businesses, it's going to be different. We might be living in a fucking metaverse and you and I will have no skills that are usable there. And there will be no opportunity for us there. Windows closing. We need to take advantage of it while we still can. So that's like my three points. I like it. Are you aroused? Viewer? Viewer? Look at me. I'm going to zoom in myself. Oh, shit. You guys can see Parker now. <laughs> Parker. Parker, wave. Wave, Parker. Just wave at him. Okay, there you go. Here. Parker is Devin's, get rid of you. Devin's Mormon twin. Yeah. Oh, he's the anti-Devin. Devin's, Devin's the shadow version he's of Parker. Like the... Slightly less handsome version of me. Maybe a lot less handsome. I don't know. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. look like brothers. Um, yeah. So, okay. That's, that's all cool. It's all well. Yeah. Uh, what a, okay. So, I think you were talking about some interesting things um, earlier when you were talking about how you got started, uh, something about a recession. I can't remember exactly what yeah, you said because we talked off. about a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, you got lot laid off during the recession. And, um, now, I'm curious what you think, uh, whether or not, you know, Biden's administration redefines what a recession is. Clearly, we're in a fucking economic downturn of some kind. All right. Shit is way too expensive. Gas is leveling out. That's cool. I don't pay for gas anyways because I have a Tesla, which is probably worse for the environment than a, a gas car is, to be honest. But uh, wh where do you see the market going? I mean, you as this is interesting because usually I'm talking to like business owners, you as a service provider and consultant for businesses like, what what do you think, man? What's going on in the in? The, let's let's look at it two levels. Let's look at it at the macro level, like the industry as a whole, and then the micro level with copywriting services and uh, yeah. marketing consulting. So, what do you think is going on? So, I'm not really big on really following economics and politics and all that stuff. I just it's one of those things that I've never really spent a lot of time focusing on, even yeah. though I should to some level, and I do to some level. Maybe, but but it's just it's never been in really my my wheelhouse, right? Um, so. I will say anything that I say about this is, is probably coming from a more hopeful place than like a, a like, you know, really knowledgeable place. Um, but my hopes are that um, Biden gets kicked out. One. Just kidding. <laughs> not really. Not really looking forward to who takes his place, though. Um, Kamala. Kamala. No. Kamala Hurst. All right. All right. Sorry all right, to interrupt but, you. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. But uh, um, I, I do think that business op stuff will hopefully I think it will, but and also hopefully, um, kind of take off a little bit because I think people are going to be looking for more opportunities to yeah. create more income. And that's entirely possible. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm taking my business right now, more yep. biz op stuff, because uh, I generally do want to help people, and I think there's a good opportunity to kind of help people, you know, find their footing and and find something at least now in, in how the market is, you know, before we're all living in the metaverse. Um, Fuck that, that shit. Before that window closes, you I kill think kill me before you put me in a fucking metaverse, man. I think it's a good opportunity for 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 people to. Uh, to learn, and I think more people are going to want to learn. Uh, well, because that's kind of what what got me to do it. I was like, I need to figure some shit out. I keep fucking losing my jobs. 
you know, yeah. I'm like fucking 26 years old, I think, 26, 27 years old, and I keep getting kicked out, and literally right now I'm living on a friend's fucking air mattress. Not right you know? now, but Not right in now. the past. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> Right now, own. he's living in his I-8 because he can't afford his house because he bought that sick-ass car. On my I'm own. I'm living on my own air mattress, guys. Okay. That's more comfortable than my bed. Um, but, yeah. So, I, I think that more people are going to be – more people are going to want to uh, kind of get into the digital marketing space. Like, I think the, the first recession – well, not recession, but, like, COVID. I think COVID really e- accelerated e-commerce and digital marketing. Oh, yeah. And all that stuff. I think it, it was agree. inevitable, but I think it, it, it like – Jumpstart it, you know, and I think this probably recession is probably going to do that for, you know, uh, more online businesses, you know, more, more people, because I mean, people don't have the money and I don't think they're going to have the confidence to start brick and mortar businesses. So I think whatever they do, it is costs, gonna, it's too yeah. expensive, man. I've looked into it. I want to start a couple brick and mortar businesses, but at this time right. it's like, I could literally like i want to open a coffee shop right it's going to cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars because i have to get a space i have to rent one or buy one okay i have to do construction i have to buy equipment i have to hire staff i have to train staff i need like all this insurance and then you have payroll which is filled with taxes and all kinds of stuff so it's like i could do that right or i could just go i'm looking at making strategic acquisitions in the e-commerce space right now i'm trying to buy a magic x competitor and hey, guy, if you, the guy who owns it is watching, which I know you're not, can you just fucking hit me up, bro? I've emailed you like five times. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and that's only $55,000. And their trailing 12 months is already like doing 12K. And I know that I can instantly bring that to like a, at least $100,000 a month business. But um, so I, I agree with what you say. Like there's so much more opportunity online because the barrier to entry is lower. And also the costs are just significantly lower and it's so fucking easy. Yeah. Anybody can do it, right? Like anybody can sign up for a ClickFunnels account or Shopify or uh, I think my wife, she's a therapist who's who's working online now. She uses like Squarespace or something. I don't know. Um, but I, I, I really like what you were saying too. I think that copywriting is such a good place for, if, if we're, if we are talking about biz op, I think copywriting is so good because it's just such a valuable skill to learn. A lot of people probably don't know this, but that's really how I got my big break in the uh, online marketing space. Like I, I was making decent money doing uh, SEO. I really got started doing SEO and I was making affiliate websites uh, selling Amazon products, just, you know, like Amazon Kindles. Uh, I ranked number one for like Amazon Kindle review, Amazon Kindle touch review, Amazon fire review. And I'd be like making like $10,000 a month doing that stuff. But when I started making like really good money is because I learned copywriting. And then I did something similar to what you were doing. You're doing. Um, I was a copywriting consultant, copywriter for hire. But I wrote for product launches on like JVZoo, ClickBank, Warrior Plus, stuff like that. And then I would take 50% of revenue generated uh, because I also did affiliate management, stuff like that. But uh, long-winded, but I still think it's just so powerful to have that skill because yeah. it's like, dude, you can... Every single business out there should have a copywriter. Yeah. It's not like one of those nice to have things. Most business owners are terrible writers. Um, they and they're like so creative and they have all these ideas and they're trying to put them all down. They can't say shit eloquently. Yeah. Like it's such a good skill to be able to sell someone in the written word or just writing scripts or whatever it is, right? Um, and I just think it's so valuable. Yeah. Like if there's two skills that I recommend anybody learn, it's sales and like proper copywriting. Because if if you can master those, like you will always be able to make at least a hundred thousand dollars a year. I cannot imagine a world where you are good at those things and you make less than a hundred thousand yeah. dollars a year. And they go hand in hand as well. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. 100%. Well, dude, you know what's funny? They're actually really different, I find. Um, yeah. because I was really bad at sales for a while and I was real and if you try to talk like a copywriter on a sales call, you sound like a fucking idiot. Yeah. Cause imagine like you're doing the ellipses. You're like, and <coughs> also, <laughs> well, like <laughs> it's just the knowledge sales knowledge helps. Yeah. You know, but it, it is really different. Um, actually I think yeah, that the skills do go hand in hand and they're complementary. And if you master yeah. them both, but I would not expect people, I would not oh, expect dude. the skills to cross over. Yeah, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want like, like one of Cardone sales guys, you know, writing my, BSL. And, yeah. You know, they probably wouldn't want me on the sales call. Yeah. They're probably, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's interesting, but I, I do think that it, you know, it'll be interesting. We'll see what happens, you know? And I agree. I think that, I think that we'll, we'll see a boom. It's interesting. So here's how I actually view it is 
right now, I think we're still in a time where people are unsure of what's going on and what's going to happen. And I think that's the worst time for business owners. Uh, and by the way, I, I know that stats are down for like Shopify at least. So, you know, we deal with Shopify stores and we've been a uh, on their theme store for multiple years and it's just organic sales. And we've been at like a similar level of sales organic month over month, right? And these past two or three months since like we started really feeling economic pressure here in the USA, theme sales are just down like 50%. Shopify laid off 10% of their staff. So it's like, I can tell that there's a little bit less interest in the e-commerce world right now. And I think it's just because we're in an uncertain time. If once it's out, like, okay, this is as bad as it gets, people will start spending money again. Yeah, but people, standard, yeah, people shopping. really hold onto their wallet when they're uncertain because they're like, is it going to be bad? Well, how bad is it going to be? And like, am I going to need to save money? I don't know what to do. I'm not sure what's going to happen. And people automatically assume like worst case scenario, the world's on fire, the world's burning. I'm not going to be able to fucking afford food and shit like that. But once people realize like, cause it's never going to be that bad. It could be, it, it entirely could be like where people are starving. I don't think it will be. And once we get to that point where it's like, okay, we're finally at the bottom. This is how bad it's going to be. People will be like, all right, this is it. This is the standard now. And then they'll be okay spending money again because yeah. they actually know what's going on. But it's that fear of the unknown. Make sure you get a little closer to the mic too. It's that fear of the unknown that really keeps people from spending. And if you can figure out, here, here's the thing too. If you can give people clarity and get rid of that feeling, then you can also really sell in times of uncertainty and when people don't know. Like our webinar, our auto webinar is crushing it right now. And I can't take credit for that. It's actually this fucking handsome stud behind me. You can't see him, but he's over there with his little glasses on looking all cute. So he runs our ads for, um, he's not a, even an advertiser. He's a programmer who decided he would try advertising and it's doing well. he just fucking crushes the game. So if you can figure out how to really talk to people and do shit in uh, times like these, you, you're, you're golden. But um, yeah, I actually took the, it's weird. I function so much differently. And that's why I, I try to kind of just share my thought processes and how I do stuff. Cause I, realize that I do shit so much differently than like most people. Yeah. That we, we could talk like, about I that kinda, too. I kind of put myself in, I kind of like, I make shit harder for myself in order to make myself like push through it. You know what I mean? Like, like shit started kind of going downhill and uncertainty. That's what we're talking about. Bro. And I fucking, I bought a goddamn supercar when I had no idea what was going to happen. Woo, you know, baby. Forward. Yeah. So to motivate me, you know, like I'm going to keep yeah. this fucking car, you know, I, I have to fucking get my hands back in the dirt and, and do this shit. You know, I have to like, I guess it's kind of like setting a goal, you know, keeping my fucking car in my house, oh, fucking, <laughs> you know, setting but, the fire under your ass, baby. Yeah, that's, that's it. Well, you know, I was thinking about that too. It's like, it, you could look at it two ways. You can look at like, oh, buying a car right now is a dumb decision. Or you could look at it as, oh, it's a good decision because now I'm going to work extra fucking hard because I got this baby that I know I want to keep. You know what I'm saying? Sick. It's just the way you have to look at it, right? Like life is all about perspective. Nothing's inherently good or bad. There's only opinions, right? right. So, uh, let's talk about your copy process, though. I think, you know, we get... <gasps> Jesus Christ, man, what's going on? Like, we're hiccuping and coughing and shit. Um, <laughs> but it's a dusty new office. Oh, yeah, it is pretty dusty in here. That's probably what it is. So we got a lot of marketers who watch this, uh, I would assume. And, you know, so you have, like, a different copywriting process than most. And you do a little less research. At least that's what you told me. I mean, uh, walk, walk me through it. Like, what is your... If you are taking on a new client and you, let's say... You took on a company here in our city. Can I say the name of them? Uh, yeah. Okay, so you just took on the Hoth as a client. Really big uh, SEO company. They're ultra successful. Probably one of the biggest SEO uh, agencies in the entire world. You came on and, you know, you increased their email revenue. Like, yeah. what was that whole process like, you know, from being brought on to increasing their email revenue? Uh, short answer, I simplified it. Um because they wanted to do more B to C, so looking at their stuff, they they do a lot of content heavy writing, do a lot of content marketing, do a lot of blogs. They have like over six hundred content writers. Oh yeah, they do. You know, massive fucking team, right? Uh, kicking out so much stuff every day. Uh, but their their emails were really worded like their articles, like they were very like informative, more content emails. Yeah. They were trying to sell products based like surrounding very long like content emails. You know, kind of talking more about the process than the than the the offer the process and the product, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and if, if you're not a copywriter, 
then you may not know this, but if you are a copywriter, you know that different forms of copy need different types of copy. You know, content writing, an article is going to be different than a sales email. Yeah. Uh, a VSL is going to be different from a Facebook ad. Yeah. You know, like th- there's just these things you learn how to kind of approach them, like kind of what length they should kind of be for like an email. Yeah, based the on, tone, yeah, the hooks, exactly. like all these different things. Yeah. So um, all of mine are, are pretty stupid simple. I, I think the more, the, the longer I write copy, the more I sound like a caveman. Uh, <laughs> me, you, no. me sell, you buy, yeah. you leg broke, you me say no, grace. me smash. Yeah, that's a exactly now. Man. Uh, a little more eloquent, but yeah, just I, I'm getting more simple, and I am doing a lot of testing too, like like the simple stuff. If it doesn't work as well with one client, I'll like you know make it a little more fancier, like it needs to be. But yeah, um, with them, it was it was like just making it more conversational, making it more you know if it's coming Showing from the a business, person. yeah. Um, or I, putting I a personality behind it. I did. Right? I, I actually created, helped them um, together. We created an avatar that the emails were coming from. So they can make more dope. of a personal connection um, in the emails. Kind of kind of position their their emails from a, 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 a woman that's actually in their organization um, that actually works with their branding and stuff. I think the emails are going out by someone named Vanessa now is her name. Vanessa. Um, it's a cute name. And it's kind of what I tell people to do too. You know, if, <laughs> if, if it's, I feel like from what I've learned. She's cute. Writing emails and stuff. Um, you know, women are going to be comfortable talking to another woman. Men are going to be more prone to reply to a woman, you yeah. know, because they're just we're fucking dudes. We have fucking hard ons, right? So we just want to. Oh, Vanessa sounds cute. Neat touch. Yeah. So Neat little things smash. like that, getting them to reply to emails, keep their open rates, you know, delivery better. Yeah. Um, just kind of playing with their emotions a little bit to to kind of make them interact with the emails, so they hit the hit the hit the inbox more. And then with the exactly, emails, you know, that's kind big. of kind of making. Um, you know, the emails that go out, just more personal and letting them know, kind of positioning the the person they're getting the emails from as like a, a personal assistant of theirs, kind of like, if you need anything, hit me up here. You know, what are your thoughts on this? Get them to reply. And I even did little tricks like, you know, an email coming from someone else, like just to, to really make them feel like Vanessa gives a shit about them. Yep. Um, like, hey, Vanessa's out sick today, but she asked me to make sure that you got yeah. this. Things like that, you and know, to, to that's really let them too. know. Uh, that's something that people underestimate, and I have ADHD, so I don't mean to interrupt, but Fine. I want to um, I want to touch on that point before we move on or else I'll forget. But, like, one of the biggest things you can do if you're a brand and you want more equity with your customers, you want a closer relationship, is make them feel heard or make them feel appreciated. People don't do that very well, no. but all people want is to be heard. And that's why SMS is so powerful too, because it really allows you to have conversations with people and, and do stuff like that. But I don't want to get into that. Anyways, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Fine. no, that, that's that's exactly the point I'm making. You know, just yeah. kind of building that credibility and trust, and it kind of goes back to the authenticity that we were talking about earlier, to where um, it also builds trust. You know, I, I feel like if people people not only want to follow somebody they know is not full of shit, but when they get a feeling that like. Let's take me, for instance, because we were already talking about, like, how my social presence is. I'm just very unapologetically me, right? And I feel like if yeah, people... Yeah, like, just look at that shirt. Yeah. I, I feel, <laughs> and the nail polish and shit. Like, well, I'm 36. I'm painting my nails. Whatever. Um, <laughs> the ladies... Boys okay. night. Come over. <laughs> let's paint our nails. <laughs> Parker's bringing the polish. He just got Machine Gun Kelly's new line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> got them all. <laughs> He's got them all. Let's come on. You're all invited to Parker's house. I'll give his address at the end. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it just comes down to that. Not only do people, like, I think I think it's just like, okay, if this guy's bold enough to fucking say this shit that could potentially get people mad at him, he's being real. So if he's being real here, there's a good chance he's being yep. real with the shit he's talking to me about. You know, and I am 100%. You know, I'll, I'll fucking tell people, like, I'll, I'll tell a company like the Hoth, like, this is awful. I don't care how much money you guys make. Like, I haven't told them this because they do a good job what they do. But, like, I'll be the person to be like, I'm, I'm one person. I'm like, this needs to not be like this, guys. You know, and I think a lot of people, when they approach certain big clients or big jobs, you know, they really don't want to step on any toes because they don't want to build bad juju with the, the, the uh, or bad blood with the, the client stuff. And, and they're hiring you to do a fucking job. So they want you to be 100% blunt and just open. And, you know, this is what I know. This is what you hired me to do. You're not going to like this answer. And, and I, th- I think I told you as well, like they were like very, I changed their stuff a lot. Yeah. Um, and the Sometimes first month, what it takes. I had a follow up meeting with the, uh, the CEO and he's like, Rob, I'm going to be 100% real with you. There are people in my organization on, on the board, you know, partners and stuff, you know, the first month they're reading your stuff and they're like, what are we paying this guy for? This is <laughs> terrible. This is, this is like awful. This wh- Why the fuck are we paying this guy? This is bullshit. Until? <laughs> Until the numbers came through the next month and they were like, put their foot in the mouth. They're like, how is, I don't know how this is working. Open but, mouth, insert foot. Yeah, but it's working. And it's because we were doing things completely different. And and 
part of the reason why it worked could be because it was so much different and it was something new to what yeah. they've been doing Novel. all these years. Yeah. Uh, or it could be because, you know, it just, re- you know, their c- customers responded better to it or, you know, whatever is, is working. And that's really all that matters at the end, you know, because you always have to consi- consistently be testing and, you know, if that stops working, try something else. But for right now, what we're doing is working and people are enjoying it. Uh, so we started making more changes to kind of the, the verbiage and the way they talk to their customers, which is pretty exciting because they're a fucking big company. Yeah. And yeah, you've worked with a lot of big clients too. And it must be interesting doing, uh, dealing with like the corporate structure and bureaucracy and stuff like that. I remember you telling me um, one time in the past with one of your uh, past clients that they were complaining that the emails were too similar. And it's like, well, you looked at the data and yeah. you're like, well, yeah, I know they're similar. That's because this is literally what generates the most revenue. Yeah. So I'm keeping the same style, yeah. using it over and over again. Like, how do you deal with situations like that? Do you just tell <laughs> them like, all right, I mean, I'll change it up. But if you look at the stats, yeah, this is what fucking works. Well, uh, I mean, a lot of times people don't want to budge too. And that's, that's kind of where like, I'm not above. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm blessed in a way or, or thankful. Hashtag um, blessed. <laughs> I'm thankful to be in a place where I can actually like stop working with people. You know, I, I can be like, no, I can tell people, no, I know when you're starting out, it's a little harder. I've been there, um, you know, like taking jobs that, you know, kind of kind of just eating shit in order to build your portfolio. And I've done that. So I'm, I'm thankful that I'm at a place to where like when these situations happen, like if you hire me to do a job and you just really don't want to listen to me or you want me to be more like the people that were here before me that didn't work as well. Like, why am I fucking here, dude? You know, uh, and so, I, I mean, if I can't change their mind, I will step away, you yeah. know, in a lot of cases. And that's a, another big client of mine that I did. They they brought me in because they want to try something new. What I was doing was working very well, kind of similar with the Hoth. It was working very well, really big company. Um, and over time, they're just like, hey, you know, this is a little off brand. Can we try it more this way? I'm like, uh, sure, we can try that, you know. I'm not opposed to trying anything. Um, and slowly, slowly, it was it was less what I was doing and becoming more just going back to what it was back before. to what it was before. And then they were on my ass. They're like, you know, the the numbers are now. We got to get those numbers up. And I'm like, they fucking were up. We were doing it my way, but you wanted to be more your way, which is the way that wasn't working before you had me come in here. So I don't know what you want me to do. You know, in those situations that yeah. they won't budge, I'm like, all right, you're paying me to do shit that doesn't work. What's going to happen is you're just you're going to fire me. You're going to fire me. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't know, man. It's kind of, I mean, you're always going to run into people like that. I, I just am as blunt as possible. I mean, you know, I'm a blunt person anyway. And I just, I just tell them, like, I'm telling you right now, like, this is, this is what's working. Like, if you want me to do it my way, let me do it my way. If you want to do it your way, get someone you want to train because you're not going to train me to do my job. I'm not here, yeah. you know, for you to train me. I'm here to tell you what to do. So, motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. Sheesh. Let's say. All right, bro. Well, yeah. I think we covered a good bit today. Um, now, if the people want to, Learn more from you. Where can they go? I know you got a book. You got you. social media profiles. You, yes, you got yes. opt-in somewhere. All right. So my Instagram is mainly just pictures of my car and me modeling underwear. So true. Um, so if you want to see that, you can look me up on Instagram. It's at uh, lucid.rob. Uh, if you want to be a little more involved in kind of like just how I... Um, yeah, tell people about Copy Punks. Oh, Copy Punks. Yeah. So Copy Punks is a business I'm starting. Um, it's a new LLC um, that I started this year. So I'm kind of moving everything into Yay, that. Yay, exciting. exciting. Um, but it's just really heavily branded on um, just kind of doing shit my way. Um, I realize what works best for me uh, and the best work I do for my clients is when I'm doing shit my way. Um, you know, just as much as they'll let me do. And for copywriters, that, those are the most fun jobs to do anyway. You know, yeah. when they're just when you like, get to do express your, your creativity. Because yeah, exactly. that's what you are. You're an artist. Yeah, so it's, it's the best. So it's kind of what I'm, I'm trying to teach other copywriters to do. Just really like harness they're fucking themselves, you know, the, the, to, to stand out, not only stand out, but like, if you're, if you're writing something and you enjoy doing that job, you're going to do a better job Yeah. because if you're doing 100%. something you don't enjoy, you're going to do the bare minimum to get it done and then move on to something you like doing. Um, so that's what I try to do. And that's, that's what I try to do in my work. And that's what I try to teach other people. So copy punks is as of right now, just a Facebook group. Um, so look it up on Facebook. What's yeah. the name of the group? Just Copy Punks. Copy Punks, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Search that yeah. shit. I also have a, a paid group where I do weekly calls with Whoop. professionals. Just like, did one with my business partner yeah, last week, Matt Schmidt. Schmidt. That's fucking awesome. Matt uh, Schmidt, the biggest fucking yeah. dude on the planet. Bigger than The Rock. He eats The Rock for breakfast. He eats literal rocks for breakfast. <laughs> it's like The Rock Biter from The Never Ending Story. 
Um, but yeah, man. So copy punks, uh, you can hit me up. Just search for me on Facebook. I have a bunch of links to that's my Robert opt-in. Walsh. Robert Walsh. Uh, There's two profiles though. Yeah. Just so you know. I believe it's Robert uh, Facebook.com forward slash Lucid Rob two. Two. Yeah, the number one two. One was taken. No, one is my business page that I never fucking use because it's it's trash and doesn't get reach. All right, uh, and then the book. The book, yeah, it's on Amazon right now. I haven't, I don't have a book funnel or anything. I don't have anything extra to sell you yet. Um, but just search for the Lazy Copywriter's Guide to the Galaxy on Amazon. There's a Kindle and a physical copy there. Uh, it's kind of my unconventional approach to kind of managing. So your, ruling the galaxy. So ruling the with fucking galaxy with copywriting. And he was the number one bestseller. He did pass $100 million offers by Alex yeah. Ramosi. Not there anymore, but you uh, did pass yeah. him, and you crazy. get fucking respect because that man pushes a lot of books. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, the book, check that out. Uh, connect with me. I, I Legitimately, I think another a big thing that I do is I legitimately like meeting people. I legitimately like yeah. talking to people. And I, that's I allowed asked me to, him for advice on this before, that's too. That's allowed me to build a lot of really great relationships. And even like years later, those relationships have turned into big jobs. Yeah. Trump Jr. I started working with him because of a, a very passive like interaction with somebody that stuck in their head a year prior on Facebook. Yeah. You know? Um, fucking so best. just like being just like fucking a genuine person and like not just fucking slitting, sliding in people's DMs and trying to sell them shit. Like, you know, interact on their fucking post if it's like relevant to you. You know, like give them an honest fucking reply, an honest comment, you know, having great like genuine conversation with people just be a fucking good dude and it, it, sure it goes a very long way because people can smell bullshit especially in this industry I smell. yeah i mean i can i know you could probably too like based on the first dm you can tell if someone's gonna pitch you oh or yeah not. i mean it's pretty yeah. obvious typically yeah hey how are you sir <laughs> sir how are sir? you sir baby i'm not deer? saying there's anything wrong with being indian by the way but deer? i'd get a lot yeah. of shit like that <laughs> dear um, well deer. rob thanks for joining us brother oh, and make sure you hit rob up uh you got your Facebook groups. You got his Facebook. You got his Instagram. And check out his book, The Lazy Copywriter's Guide to the Galaxy, if you want to see how Rob is killing the copy game and landing some absolutely massive clients. You know, uh, his clients are some of the biggest in the industry and just people that are massive out there in the world, like you said, Donald Trump Jr. So if you want to learn more, make sure you go out, search Rob. Just add him as a friend, too. He's He's one of the most outgoing, uh, nice guys I've had the pleasure of ever meeting. And, of course, one of my closest friends. But, uh, guys, question. I have to do Clayton's part now. If you haven't yet liked, commented, and subscribed on YouTube, what are you doing? He does it so much better. He's got, like, some can weird I, can girl I do voice. That? Yeah. Rowdy boys. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. I just wanted to do um, that. But waiting all day if you're watching this on youtube make sure you like comment and subscribe ring the bell if you're on apple podcasts make sure that you subscribe and leave a five-star review and if you're on spotify just make sure that you subscribe uh rob thanks for joining yeah, man thanks for having me dude this oh was fun yeah it was a great time and Super for good, everyone else who's watching don't forget you can also go to rowdyboys.net maybe.com i think it's rowdyboys.net enter your email and subscribe it looks like rob really wants to say rowdy boys or something no, just, no, I'll wait. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so make sure you check that out. We'll see you guys on the next week. This has been Devin Zander with the great, uh, I'm just trying, so you sing Clayton, uh, Robert Walsh, and we are the Rowdy Boys. Yes, well, we're half the Rowdy Boys and a <laughs> yeah. guest whose shirt is very fucking rowdy, rowdy boy. I, I will admit. So right. guys, we will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and listening.